guys, so Anna's not here right now, but this is where I kind of been filming this whole thing. And this, the topic of this video is kind of interesting. It's on particle physics, and it's kind of not, like, it's looking outside of the box of what you learn about electrons and neutrons and protons, because there's a lot more to it, and I hope you guys like the video. So just like how fruit can be classified by ripeness and kind, particles are classified as either elementary or composite, which describes how basic or complex they are, as well as either a fermion or boson based on their spins and properties. Fermions are particles with multiples of half-spin charges, like one-halves, three-halves, etc. Elementary fermions all have a spin of plus or minus one-half and are split into two categories, with each category containing six flavors, or types, as well as three generations with two flavors each. Each generation is also heavier and more rare than the last. Bosons, on the other hand, are particles with integer spins. There's six elementary bosons in the standard model, and they all carry forces, with the exception of the Higgs boson, as the Higgs field is not a force. An important difference between fermions and bosons is that all fermions have mass, unlike some bosons. The two categories of elementary fermions are quarks and leptons. The six flavors of quarks are up, charm, and top, which all have positive two-thirds charges, and down, strange, and bottom, which all have negative one-third charges. Quarks always come in their respective pairs, or generations, and have either a negative one-half or one-half spin. The six leptons are the electron, muon, and tau, which all have negative one charges, and their respective neutrinos, which are all neutral. Leptons are solitary particles. Another important property in quarks, and as we'll later see, gluons, is their color charge. Quarks come in three colors, red, green, and blue, but don't get confused. They're not what we know as visual colors, just as how particle spin isn't rotation. It's just another property some particles have. And oops, that marker was upside down. This is a quick visual aid. The quarks are happy because, in case you didn't know, quarks make up protons, which are positive. Photons carry electromagnetic force, and because light is an electromagnetic wave, photons are particles of light. Gluons carry strong force, or nuclear force. In other words, they're the glue that holds the quarks and protons and neutrons together. The two W bosons and the Z boson carry the weak force, or weak nuclear force, responsible for radioactive decay. The Higgs boson, or the god particle, was recently discovered by scientists at CERN and is part of the Higgs field, which allows matter to have mass. And the graviton theoretically carries the force of gravity. Although it hasn't been discovered yet, the graviton is believed to be part of the explanation of gravity, which as of now doesn't have an exact explanation. This is a chart of bosons and their respective spins and charges. Also, gluons contain a combination of a color, red, green, or blue, and an anti-color, anti-red, anti-green, or anti-blue, making a total of eight different colors associated with them. Composite particles are made up of a combination of elementary particles. One major category of composite particles that will go into are hadrons, which are particles composed of quarks and split into two groups, baryons and mesons. Baryons are fermions made of three quarks, such as the proton and neutron. Although we talked about all fermions having half-integer spins, we know that the proton has a positive one charge, while the neutron is neutral. This is possible because the two up quarks and one down quark in the proton have charges of two-thirds, two-thirds, and negative one-third, which, when added together, equals one. The neutron is made up of one up quark and two down quarks, the sum of which is zero. Mesons are composite bosons made of one quark and one antiquark, like the pion and kaon. Mesons are color neutral or have no net color charge, since each meson carries a quark and an antiquark with the corresponding anticolor to cancel it out, like a red quark and an anti-red antiquark. So I've mentioned antiparticles several times so far, but haven't really explained them yet. Every particle has an anti-counterpart with the same mass and spin, just with a different charge. For example, the anti-electron is called a positron, an electron with a positive one charge, and the W plus and W minus bosons are antiparticles of each other. The anti-quark and anti-gluon also come in anti-colors. And, uh, you can ignore the stuff at the bottom, I messed up. But the interesting thing is, is that when antimatter comes in contact with matter, they pretty much implode. Just like how the colors orange and blue don't go well with each other, or do they, I don't know, antimatter and matter are incompatible, which is why antimatter is so expensive and difficult to create and maintain. Since the Earth is mostly, you know, matter, but E equals MC squared, the matter gets converted to energy, and people believe that antimatter could be a valuable source of it if it wasn't more expensive to make than it's actually worth. Thanks for watching, and hey, at least now, if you ever visit Europe and go see the Large Hadron Collider, you'll know what a hadron is.